the war for ascension a crisis reborn book one by dominician genari read by dominician genari act one planet numaria hydraland province i cannot sleep again my eyes are open, but I struggle to see the world. Lifting myself off the edge of the bed, I feel a pain climb from my neck into my head. I welcome it as assurance I am alive. I lift my eyes toward the waterfall outside the palace window. The sound of falling water calms my nerves. The smell of brown sugar, butter, and cinnamon drifting through the window reminds me of my younger days. Those were good days. It has been seven weeks since I have interacted with the people of my city. You are the great Adamantius, they tell me. King of Kinoria, Lord of Hydraland, the greatest civilization in the Sistema Solaris. Maybe in the better days. Hydraland, Nomaria's main landmass, embraces tropical islands, sandy beaches, mountain ranges, and flat river plains that flood after monsoonal rains, giving the land its name, Hydraland. Rich agricultural belts and sparsely populated settlements unite multiple races in gregarious communities. The great river Medion serves as a source of travel and sustenance, with numerous streams and rivers branching from it. With opulent Kinoria as its capital, Hydraland province is the envy of all who seek its illustrious stature and providence. Sun streams across the balcony into the master bedroom, warming the dark red cape I drape upon my shoulders. My feet squeak atop the polished stone floors as I stroll across the room. On the opposite wall hangs a framed mirror and I see myself as if I were staring at someone in the next room. My half braided black hair appears blue silver and my light gray eyes siphon the sun's rays, reflecting like gleaming marbles against the face I shaved the night before. I cannot see my citrine wedding ring, but I feel it on my ring finger. I hear footsteps behind me. She is here. Not for one moment do I take what I have for granted, especially her. Even being a king who carries the monumental weight of a kingdom and its tribulations, I know I am blessed. I gaze upon my queen. Smile, my love, Queen Nefertari says. I am the reason this city has become complacent in its riches. She offers a smile. You saved our people from the greatest evil this planet has seen. You welcomed other races into our kingdom. You fought their wars for them. And you continue to this day to protect them. I have never felt worthy of being their leader. I've squeezed my way through it, but I know the truth about myself. What truth is that? She asks. I pause, shaking my head. I am unworthy and I struggle to match the purity of your heart. Sometimes I wish this could all go away and I could be normal. Selfish, I know. Adamantius, your heart is of gold. Your intentions are pure. This city has endured the unrelenting attack of enemy forces for thousands of years. Look at the lives you have lost and the dangers you have faced for our kingdom. Here we stand safe within its bounds because of you. I gaze toward the mirror. Will they oppose me if I fail to maintain their ideal city? The Kinorians love you, 
They always have and always will. I slip my Samari crown upon my head. The sparkling green jewel sits perfectly on my forehead. The rare Samari alloy was a gift brought to Hydraland by the ancient builder race at a time immemorial. How long will I be able to call myself king? How long will this bliss she speaks of last? I stare at her. Your words comfort me. She smiles. I know you well enough to know when you need to smile. I fix my eyes on the city centre. I have their favour, but how can I be better? The hope our people share in Hydraland, she reminds me, is the envy of the entire solar system. You are doing all you can. I caress her face. None of this could have been done without you, Nevatari. You outshine every star in the heavens. My fingers tingle against her warm skin. It hurts to love someone this much. But how do I calm this furnace of love and desire? I see her eyes close for a moment. Her silvery, off-the-shoulders dress wraps perfectly against her slender body. Like filament creeping up her lissom neck, her dress complements her long, amplifier hair, rich yet dark, unlike anything I have seen. Her turquoise grey eyes frame high cheekbones against her tanned skin. In a crowd, her eyes stand out, even alongside the Kenordians. Her genetics are perfection, and the harmony of her soul spills onto me like warm water. I struggle to form the right words. I love you with every power inside of me. She lifts both my hands and interlaces her fingers between mine. A pair of rainbow lorikeets chirp and dance upon the railing outside my window. I hear and feel Nevitari's breathing against my face. Her smile strikes at my heart, and I ignite inside. If she is my light, she is also my darkness. I need her to remind me of a way out of my turbulent mind. Surrounding the light of her hope and love looms a shadow. I feel a shiver creep upon my spine, followed by a heavy presence that transforms into anxiety. Will I ever be free of this state of mind? This subconscious program has reduced the greatest figures of the past to dust. I hope one day to be free of it, free of the anguish it causes, free of the pain. Nevatari lets go of my hands. Her smile inverts to a frown. She takes a step backward. What bothers you? I clasp the amulet around my neck. Something strains my mind. Today is your day, she leans closer to me. Let nothing change that. The breeze drifts against us, and I inhale the blissful rose perfume on her skin, like spiced vanilla and baked cookies. I see a translucent blue aura surround her body, her sparkling earrings, which I gave her on her birthday, glint in its light. I feel her serene intentions seep into my mind as she smiles, and I forget my anxiety. Closing our eyes, we lean in on each other until the particles separating us are no more. I hear my pulse elevate as I smell her lips and feel the heat of her sweet breath in my mouth. I kiss her lips like it is the last time. I pull and spin her toward the windowsill, turning our faces toward the sun. Our young son calls in the distance. Father! Father! A rush of quick steps rattles along the hallway. We pause and smile at each other. Nevatari squeezes my hand. He is delighted to be involved in your birthday celebrations. I know why. Letting go of her, I amble toward the doorway. 
The marble floors of the corridor leading to our room are bathed in sunlight. Thanks to the skylights and the horizontal windows atop the walls. My eyes follow the framed artwork and statues upon the stone walls. Eldarian, my voice tumbles down the corridor. Our six-year-old son scuttles around the corner. His dark blue tunic flutters about him, held together by small brass buttons from his belly to his chest. His black boots slap the marble. His beaming eyes go from the floor in front of him to me. He leaps onto me, hugging me into a clinch. I plant a kiss on his cheek before placing him on his feet. My son is all me, except for his smile and eyes, which he claimed from his mother. It is not the first time in Hydraland that a star being and a Kinorian have united to create a child. Star beings are forbidden to mix their seed with the surface dwelling races. However, ours was a fateful union, a prophetic union. Are we doing fireworks tonight, father? Aldarian tugs at my hand. Can I light the first one? Maybe yes, maybe no. I try to conceal my laughter. Aldarian frowns. But you promised. I stare into his eyes. I'm so proud of you, Aldarian. You are beautiful and strong and intelligent. What does intelli... intelligent mean, father? I kiss his forehead. Intelligence is responsibility through judgment. Eldarian knows how extraordinary the fireworks will be, and he wants to share all the joy with the rest of our people. Nevatari saunters toward us. Eldarian clasps Nevatari's hand. Father's not doing fireworks this year. I laugh. We will. I simply wanted to see if you remembered. Eldarian throws his hands in the air. Yes! I hear an exchange of heated voices down the adjoining hallway. My body twists in the direction of the noise. I take three steps forward and stop. My queen rushes beside me and clasps my face. Peering into her eyes, I see her telepathic senses are in trauma. I watch her glowing aura diminish. I do not want to hear these sudden voices at the end of my hallway. I am afraid of what they debate. It seems another choice, another decision I must make. I never wanted to make all the decisions. My intentions were not always ideal. I am the reason these voices argue. What do you see, Nevatari? Standing in silence, she lets go of my face. Her eyelids shut, but her pupils move rapidly beneath them. The sunlight streaming through the windows darkens as a cloud covers the sun. I feel shadows creep upon my soul once again. My amulet vibrates upon my chest. Red and black veins infuse into the blue and white lights. The disturbance I sense is emotionally unbearable. I become impatient. Nevatari, what do you see? I ask again. She opens her eyes and sighs, lowering her head. I see a small tear drip onto her cheek. She wipes the tear from her face. The voices grow louder along the adjacent passageways. He is here, she forces the words out. Astra has entered Kinoria. My stomach sinks at the sound of his name. Eldarian hugs Nevatari's waist. Why are you upset? I caress his head. Just an unexpected visitor. My steward, Serafina, rushes along the corridor, her hair swishing across her shoulders. Following her is my security detail of 20 Kinorian warriors. My guards are fully armed and ready for war. Each wears a dark grey and red tactical uniform, black boots, anti-grav grenades, and titanium body armor. 
a directed energy weapon is slung over each guard's shoulder, and long blades are strapped to their thighs. Lord Adamantius, Queen Nevatari, Seraphina says swiftly. There's been a security breach. Enemy detachments have crossed our southern and eastern borders, taking the pass of Adamantius. Shadow Fleet, Wild Men, and the Rifers mainly. Rifers? I ask. The thought of those monsters injects fear into me. The gait of their ape-like bodies, their fangs, their black eyes, the sound of their rasping breaths, and their putrid stench serve as a reminder of the enemy's will. Festering in their pits of pain, the Rifers have once again heard their master's call. The Shadow Fleet. I wish I had never heard of those vicious reptilian beings. Heat radiates off my face. Why would our border scouts not report this? My senior guard and friend, Kirion Rondell, steps forward, removing his helm and gloves. He brushes his long black hair off his sweaty forehead with a trembling hand. Lifting his eyes toward me, he slowly shakes his head. His grey blue eyes are bloodshot, the kind of bloodshot you get staying up three days in a row. His pale face is frozen like a statue. I have not seen him like this in a very long time. Was it the multitudes of rifles? Had he seen a ghost? Or am I the ghost in his eyes? My most powerful commander stands shaken. All but one of our scouts are dead, Rondell says. Killed by one of these. He lifts a long leather wrap in front of me. He peels the first layer back, then the second, until he reveals a handheld weapon. Shining like a black diamond, the weapon's surface is textured like the peel of an orange. Not a speck of rust or corrosion can be seen on the extraterrestrial metal. Rondell withdraws the weapon from the wrap and lays it in my hands. A high impulse plasma generator. I flick the switch above the trigger. A translucent chamber below the weapon's rear sight fills with the reddish purple plasma. Not our technology. I hand the arcane gun back to him. What about our northern and western borders? Neither are contactable, Rondell says. The lone survivor reported a force of 200,000 enemy troops heading toward the city. He swipes a smart glass panel attached to his left forearm. I have deployed Commander Menekar's squadron to do what they can to delay them. I stare at Serafina. How much time do we have? Twenty minutes at best, Serafina says. Alert the armed forces of Defense Order Zero. Nevatari directs Serafina. Astra has returned to claim what he believes is his. He comes for the Silomir. The Silomir is the most powerful artifact ever brought into our solar system. Capable of moving a mountain, with the force of harnessing the very creation of life itself, this advanced, destructive technology was never meant to stay on this planet. Her words hit me like a storm. Serafina, Rondell, and the rest of the guards stand as if trapped in a temporal break. Eldarian shivers between Nevatari and me, gazing upon the tired faces of my guards. I hear their gloves squeaking against their weapons. One after another, I stare into their eyes because I want them to know how I feel. I feel ashamed. I should have seen this coming. I tell them the truth I struggle to face. We are not prepared to face a fallen god. Dominician Janari here, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it made you feel that burning energy and that burning rage inside you in a good way. Don't forget to follow my sci-fi fantasy author page in which I will be delivering books in the fantasy genre. And also, I will be delivering something that no one else has done, an epic instrumental album of music based on the book series, 
for my book series, The War for Ascension. Join me as we embark on this journey together, as we enlighten humanity with worthy pieces of art.